Hi, everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and these are November's horoscopes. So you're listening to my sun sign horoscope for Sagittarius. This is for November of 2018. So let's go ahead and take a look. <clears throat> Oops, let's move this over here. All right, so the first big transit of the month that I'm taking a look at this month is the new moon. The new moon falls on November 7th, and for you, it's falling in your 12th whole sign house. And that is a house of, um, uh, it is a house that often requires us to surrender to the reality of impermanence. It's disappointment, it's grief, it's abandonment, it's loneliness, it's a sort of dark night of the soul, or it's even self-destructiveness. The 12th house is a sort of gestational place. It's a place where we're laboring with things. It's a place where we uh, may feel a little bit like we are in exile. And I think it's very interesting that this 12th house new moon falls after a whole year of Jupiter being in Scorpio in your 12th house. So these 12th house themes that I'm talking about, this sort of dark night of the soul territory has been uh, ripe for Sagittarians over the course of the past year. It's just like that's where there's been a lot of energy and focus. Your ruling planet, Jupiter, as a Sagittarius, has been in this 12th house. Now, lots of good things can come out of the 12th house. The realization that we are a part of something bigger than the things that pass in this material world. It's a very spiritual realization that can come from the 12th house. Um, also, realization about yourself and your own patterns of self-destructiveness that you know, you're facing your own inner shadows. Uh, also, uh, loss and the themes of, um, you know, uh, whether uh, other people in our life too, and the things we've been dealing with in relationships or with home and family, and just the the, the process of of change has been um, pronounced. As the twelfth house can also be thought of as again a kind of a gestational place where something is being born, but it's sort of going through the labor pains of birth. So the new moon in Scorpio this month is sort of capping it off. It's capping off a long process. Um, meanwhile, all month long, uh, because Jupiter's about to enter Sagittarius on the 8th, which I'll talk about in a minute. But meanwhile, all month long, uh, the, um, the new moon announcing this uh, a further like sort of last season of 12th house activity, really strong with the new moon there. Meanwhile, Venus retrograde is just, uh, really lit up with Uranus all month long. Venus is opposing Uranus across the 5th and the 11th. These are houses that have a lot to do with creativity, collaboration, groups, friends, social circles. How are you actualizing changes within yourself in, in terms of your societal or social interactions? How are you actualizing a new creative path or vision in terms of groups that you belong to or cultures of people that you hang out with? How are you wanting to defy your, the, the creative norms right now, meaning your own, the way that you tend to be as an individual and the way that you uh, show up in the world? And if you're a creative type of person, then it might be a, a little bit of a, a renaissance period. There's inventiveness and originality with Venus opposite Uranus. The themes of independence versus dependence are also pronounced. Like, I want to go it on my own. I'm ready to do my own thing. But wait, I'd, I'd like the help and collaboration or friendship of others. These themes are powering all month long, could affect your intimate relationships or, you know, romantic relationships, uh, social dynamics quite strongly. Um, Venus opposite Uranus across the 5th and the 11th, watch for things to change on the 17th as Venus turns direct. And uh, you might see a, a little bit of a positive shift of momentum or a turning of the tide, becoming clear about things, being ready to move forward with things. But then whatever you're moving forward with, things may need to come to a head again by the end of the month because Venus will oppose Uranus one more time before moving back into your 12th house. So, you're going through a lot of social change right now. That's for sure. What you're seeking or what you're looking for socially needs to change. It needs to get healthier or it needs to be more, it needs to be more in line with your dharma, your sense of who you are and what you have to share with the world. So there's an opportunity for that to, you know, for that kind of change to happen this month. Um, but you have to follow through and you have to act on what you're feeling like you, you know you must. Um, of course, burning bridges uh, and uh, chastising or judging others to make your point is 
not recommended. But, uh, you know, you may have to um, make some harder choices within yourself about your, especially around social life or relationships this month. Now, the good news, your personal planet, Jupiter, is coming home. Woo! You're the only sign that gets a woo. This is, I'll do it again. Woo! That's it. That's what, that's all you get, but no, it's Jupiter entering your <laughs> Jupiter entering your home sign is awesome because this is your home planet coming home to your home sign, which means you're you're ready for a year of like accelerated growth, personal expansion, a new chapter. It's really a very positive time. You have to go back, you know, twelve years the last time that this happened between 2006 and 2007, fall of 2006, like fall of 2007, last time that it was sort of your Jupiter year, your Jupiter return into your first house. So personal expansion, growth, wisdom, faith, optimism, hope, good luck, it, it's all kind of coming for you. You can do overdo things, you can overeat, you can get a big ego, you can sort of overindulge, be careful of like too large, too big, but at the same time, don't be afraid to, to go for it. That's what Jupiter's all about. So uh, Jupiter in your first house is going to be a, a year of accelerated growth and confidence and uh, new beginnings. And, and so don't, don't be afraid. Remember, Jupiter brings opportunities. But we, still have to, we still have to sort of capitalize on those oppor- opportunities. We have to act on them and sort of seize the day. So it's a carpe diem for you. You actually got two woos, which um, you may never get again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, that's Jupiter entering Sagittarius. Now, another interesting transit is on November 15th. I'm actually uh, really excited for this transit because this transit takes <clears throat> the planet Mars out of Aquarius where it's been since May of 2018, and it brings it into Pisces, moves it into your fourth house. Now, Mars, the god of war, entering your fourth house could bring power struggles, turmoil, challenges, in home and family or things related to property. Okay, so that's not super fun. But Mars also energizes. And Mars, by the 19th, is going to be square to Jupiter in your first house, really going to energize you. It's, it's, going, it's, a, it's a moment of feeling really energized. Now, it may somehow involve changes or challenges that are coming at home uh, in, in your, around family or around your relationship with your parents or your living situation. But the, chain, the, the, the energy of Mars entering this fourth house has the ability to really energize you and energize the need or desire to change from the inside out. Um, the, Mars in the fourth house can also be about the theme of sacrifice, self-sacrifice on behalf of family or family members uh, or family members and their sacrifice for you. Um, there can also be different, again, different forms of tension or struggle between the first and fourth house, the house of self, health, you, and new beginnings, as well as the house of home, family, property, and family karma. So those two themes are, again, in a sort of tense dynamic, but they're activating an energizing change in you, which is uh, overall going to be probably pretty optimistic and positive. Now, the other thing that is uh, happening is right around the 17th, you're going to see um, <clears throat> Mercury in your home sign of Sagittarius turning retrograde and in a square with Neptune in your fourth house. So more first house, fourth house uh, tension. Um, are you seeing everything clearly? Are you speaking the truth? Are others speaking the truth to you? Be careful of uh, keeping good boundaries, being um, mindful about uh, the way that the environment, that your living environment especially is affecting you, is affecting your mind or your health. You also want to be careful because, you know, you don't want to be that person who uh, basically, you know, bullies other people through p- persuasion, emotional manipulation, etc. Some of that could be there right now. So you can be the recipient or you could be the person sort of doling it out. So, you know, just be careful that you're uh, in all the ways that you communicate with other people, even if you're feeling very passionate, that you give space and room for other people to have a response and to process things on their own. Now, on the other hand, uh, Mercury square to Neptune can also indicate that there is a period of um, confusion and some delays or breakdowns or uh, difficult setbacks, changes or reversals of fortune. These would be very personal in nature, and they would also, again, fall into some kind of uh, relationship with 
home, family, or property issues. So if you, think, if you don't think that's enough, now check out the full moon. On November 22nd into the 23rd, the full moon is in Gemini in your seventh house of relationships, marriage, opposing these planets, Sun, Jupiter, Mercury retrograde in the first house, T-square to Mars and Neptune in the fourth house of home and family. So these are three angular houses in your chart just getting totally lit up by the full moon. What does that mean? Well, it means that there's, there's a sort of maximal amount of tension in relationships at home and it, within yourself is a very new, fresh moment for you, but it's immediately going to draw uh, tension and d- dynamic stress, possibly creative, creatively fruitful or productive tension. So it's not necessarily just bad, but it'll be in terms of your relationships. And the, the focus of the full moon is in your house of relationships, your social dimension of life. And again, home and family, where there's just a kind of a motor churning down there. It's a more watery, deep, emotionally, uh, you know, a little bit emotionally conflicted or intense space, a home and family this month. So full moon, bringing those areas to a head. Uh, Check that out around November 22nd or the 23rd. So that's what I've got for you guys this month. Uh, I hope that you'll share your stories with me. Go ahead and put them into the comment feed. I'd love to hear about what happens for you this month as the month goes on. And then uh, please uh, stay tuned because December's end of the year horoscopes, I can't believe it, they're already here. The December will be coming up soon. So I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Have a great month of November.